Hello everyone and welcome to another video in my series on how to operate the Embraer E-175 aircraft. In the previous video we covered the climb, cruise and descent phases of flight, so now we're going to get into conducting an ILS approach. The ILS approach in the Embraer E-175 is fairly conventional, like most other modern airliner jets, but there are a few interesting quirks that we do need to examine, so let's hop in the flight deck and talk about the procedures. All right, here we are back in the flight deck of the Embraer E-175. As we approach 10,000 feet, one of the first things we need to do to get set up for our approach is to do the approach flow and the approach checklist. For the approach flow, we simply look up and we just make sure that the landing lights are on, that the seatbelt sign is on, and the stero light is on. Depending on your airline, you'll either turn the stero light on or double shine the seatbelt sign to make sure that the flight attendants know we're about to land. We'll also make sure that we have the correct nav aid tune, so double check the frequency against your approach. Today we're doing the uh, ILS runway 22 left into Boston, so 10.3 is the correct frequency. And if it hasn't already auto popped up on you, you'll press the preview button, which will show the localizer, of course, on your HSI. We're still in FMS mode, we're still in LNAV using FMS, but you can now see the inbound course. You'll be able to also see when we're actually uh, joining final while still in FMS mode. Once you've completed all those items, we'll read the checklist. Approach checklist. Briefing. Complete. Landing data set. So verify on the PERF landing page that your landing speeds have all been specified. Pass your signs panel set. Make sure that we do have the fasten seatbelt sign and or the sterile light on. Nav aids and nav accuracy verified. Again, just checking that we did verify the frequency is correct for the approach we're planning to do. Minimums, we've got Barrow 220, which is correct for the ILS 22 left into Boston. And altimeters, set and cross-checked. And as you can see, I was a little bit uh, behind the ball here and I did not set the local altimeter. Two nine nine one set and cross-checked. And the approach checklist is complete and we're ready to continue inbound. As we continue inbound, there are multiple ways to slow the aircraft down. The speed brake is one of the key ways to slow the aircraft down in the clean configuration if you need to slow down and descend quickly. However, there are a few caveats with the use of the speed brake. I did try to use a speed brake earlier and there is a little glitch here so it's now saying speed brake lever disagree which is not the case, so disregard that. However, there are a couple of limitations to the speed brakes. The speed brakes cannot be used if you have more than flaps 1 extended. So flaps 2, 3, 4, 5, and full, if you have the flaps at either of those positions, then you cannot use the speed brakes. The speed brakes will be inhibited. And also at lower speeds, below 180 knots, the speed brakes will not operate. So if you've already slowed down enough below 180 knots, the speed brakes will not operate. So just keep that in mind. Once you start to deploy flaps, you'll no longer be able to use the speed brakes to slow down. As we're turning downwind here for the ILS runway 22 left here in Boston, you can see that the FMS has already closed up the approach for us. This is not correct behavior and will be fixed in the updated version of the FMS. For now, we're going to prepare to go into heading mode so we can fly a manual vector to our final approach course. We'll also want to make sure that we are in manual speed mode. Right now, managed speed is not available where the FMS controls the target speed. However, once it does become available, it's highly recommended to not use the managed speed anywhere in the terminal area. Once you get within 30 miles below 10,000 feet of your destination, you should always be in manual speed mode. This ensures that the pilot has direct control over the speed of the aircraft and the, speed, the aircraft speed does not suddenly change unexpectedly and possibly contrary to ATC instructions. We're now on the downwind, level at 6,000. We're going to start descending down to our final approach intercept altitude of 3,000 feet. And as we do that, we're also going to want to begin to slow down. So once you're on base, you should slow the aircraft to 210 knots to ensure that you can deploy flaps and slow the aircraft further. There are basically two ways to intercept final approach in the Embraer E-175. You can do it with LNAV and preview mode, or you can do it directly with the VOR loc mode or the green needle mode. In the LNAV preview mode, once the preview is brought up for an active approach, we can actually arm approach mode even though we're still navigating using the FMS. 
The beauty of the preview mode is that it will show us when we're intercepting final approach. You'll see the needle center, and you'll also see the approach automatically capture and switch from FMS mode into VOR look mode directly. The other way to intercept final approach using vectors is the green needles method. Once we are no longer using the LNAV to navigate, we simply switch to VL mode, VOR localizer mode, which brings the green needles up on our HSI, and using heading mode, we can intercept an approach like we normally would. Now that we've got 210 knots, let's get flaps one going. Today approach mode is not going to work for me, so we'll have to switch to the VOR low boat, green needles, which should have already had the inbound course set. And then we can arm approach. And you can see we've locked in the localizer. We don't have the glide slope quite yet, but we can start slowing down. Once you start turning final, we should slow to about 180 knots and be prepared to deploy flap two. You don't have to deploy flap two too early, but you want to have it before you intercept the glide slope. If you try to descend on the glide slope with only flaps one, depending upon the weight, you may not be able to match the glide slope and you may gain speed downhill. So make sure you're ready for flaps two before you intercept the glide slope. At glide slope intercept, we want to make sure that the missed approach altitude is set just like with every other aircraft. So glide slope, 3,000 feet is set for the missed approach. And as you can see, even with flaps one, we can't quite maintain speed. We're slowly gaining speed. So flaps two should give us enough extra drag to be able to maintain speed. As we approach the FAF, we want to begin slowing to 160 knots. And you usually want to get flaps three in the gear as you approach the final approach fix. We'll set 165 knots for now. That's about two miles to the final approach fix. Gear down. Flaps three. As we cross the FAF, focus 1700. Missed approach altitude set. Verify the missed approach altitude is still set to 3000 or was set correctly at the missed at the glide slope intercept, and then we can begin slowing to our final approach speed. Flaps five. Speed set to V app, in this case, 127. Before landing checklist, ICAS checked. Make sure that you do not have any messages you don't know about on the ICAS. This message for some reason will not go away today, so we're just going to ignore it, but it's not correct. Landing gear down. Verify on the ICAST that the landing gear is indicating down. And flat flap 5 set. So for whatever your landing configuration is, make sure you've got it set. Flap 5 or flap full. The only two landing configurations in the Embraer are flap 5 and flap full. Flap 5 being the most common and flap full usually being reserved for uh, very short field performance. One thousand feet to go, stable. In this case, our speed is a little faster than it should be, and I don't know why it's not slowing down. The aircraft perhaps needs a little bit more fine tuning. At any point when landing is assured, you can disengage the autopilot. Still stable, a little faster than we would like. Landing in the Embraer is pretty conventional. You're going to start a flare at about 50 feet and bring the thrust levers to idle.
once you touch down, apply reverse, and brakes. That shouldn't happen. It's just due to the fact that as I transitioned out of reverse, the thrust levers were still not quite at idle. As you pass through 80 knots, make sure the thrust reversers are at idle reverse only, and as you approach 30 knots, make sure the thrust reversers are stowed, all to avoid faw digestion by the engines as you slow down and begin taxiing. And there you go, we've landed the aircraft. We'll do the after landing and shutdown flow in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.